Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial, sort of. Let's get started. So I'm Chris Bailey, and uh, as you know, C. Bailey Film uh, is a really cool little YouTube channel that's got some fun sci-fi stuff on it. But I also do um, freelance work, and I run a little animation studio in Sydney, Australia. And so that's how actually I, um, I I run my business that way. That's that's what I really do for income. I wanted to just talk a little bit about how to get started as a freelancer um, because. I get the question a lot. Like a lot of people email me and ask me all the time, like, hey, what, you know, how do you get started? How do you make money doing this? The number one most important thing is your portfolio. What's the, what's the work that you have that you can show as an example of what you've done? So what I tell people is start with that. So, you know, watch my tutorials, do a couple of my videos and, and have, you know, have some stuff that you can show. So you've got some cool uh, examples that you can do some 3D stuff. Have this body of work collected somewhere. So. Start a website for yourself or a YouTube channel, just somewhere where you can post up stuff. It doesn't have to be a huge body of work. It just has to be good. So you're only as good as your worst example. Be really selective about what you put in there. So the next step I would do is once I've collated my work onto a website, I would then look for what are the companies in my city um, that are doing animation or doing this kind of work motion design, doing commercials, doing uh, videos for companies online. So just search for like production company or search for um, motion design or video company, video maker company, things like that uh, in your local area. And the reason why your local area, it's because it's really good to build those local relationships first, because what you need is a, you need a, a people need to trust you before they hire you. And if you're trying to just get work off the internet, it's, it's actually exceptionally difficult to get people to trust you and to get work off the internet. It's much easier to build trust one-on-one. -on -one. So if you can find a place locally that's advertising for freelancers. Now they may not be advertising for freelancers. This is an important point. So this is probably one of the best tips I could give you. What you do is you just contact them. It doesn't matter who you contact. You even just use their form contact on their website if they don't even have an email address. They'll still read it. Contact them and say, hi, my name is such and such. Here's my link to my, my work. I'm a freelancer and I'm just wanting to know if you have any opportunities uh, coming up. I'd love to talk to someone about that. And then give it like, I don't know, an hour, two hours. Pick up the phone and call that company and then say, hi, I just sent you guys an email about uh, looking for potential opportunities as a freelancer. Um, I just wonder if there's anyone I could talk to um, about that um, just to find out what's coming up and if there's anything that you've got and usually so pretty much every time I've done this uh, they will forward you on to they'll pass your call on to whoever's in charge of that in the company and you end up having a conversation with them and the fact that you called them sets you out like way ahead of the crowd um, it's something that people don't do and so if you do that you're just already way ahead of the crowd they'll check out your reel and they might have something coming up that's appropriate and you'll get a shot they'll say yeah look could you come in next week and uh, you know we've got this job on and we could you know what's your rate <laughs> and then you gotta figure that out all right this is really tough so how much do you charge it's different in every country right uh, so the rates that I charge uh, for Sydney Australia are gonna be different than what they are where you live potentially yeah, depending on where you're at when you first get a job um, often they will tell you what the rate is. So often they'll say, all right, look, this job is, you know, say 50 bucks an hour or something like that. Um, or, you know, it's 400 bucks for a day or, you know, and so it, they'll tell you whatever that, that rate is. Um, and you know, you just go along with the ride. And as you build those relationships, you can start asking, cause you'll be working alongside other people that have a lot more experience. You can start asking them, hey, what, what do you charge as a day rate if you do freelance? What do you, you know, what's the, what are the day rate? And when you get that, that insider knowledge from people that are in your city, um, in your currency, in your country, they're gonna give you the right advice. The other way of doing it um, is to actually contact other artists um, and pretend like you're a company and ask them for a quote. So look, what's your day rate? I've got a job coming up. I'm, I'm trying to get some some quotes for, what's your day rate? And people will write back usually and say, oh, well, this is what I charge for this kind of animation, this switch or this kind of animation. No one really posts it on their websites and stuff. You kind of have to contact people directly. But then you also got to think about who it is that you're quoting to. Um, so you want to try and get the job. That's always the goal. 
So you don't necessarily always quote the highest rate to everybody. You want to actually be a bit selective and go, look, this is a tiny, this is a one person that's just hiring me for this illustration for this little thing. I'm going to charge less so that they'll say yes to the job because I want to get the work because money in the door is better than no money in the door, right? But then if it's a big company that's asked you, you can go, look, actually this big company can probably afford more. They've got a bigger budget. They can pay it, pay me more what it's worth. That's another way to do it. You could undercut the market. That'll give you opportunities. Um, again, that kind of relies on figuring out what other people charge. Because if you charge too low, people aren't going to trust you. They're going to go, is this going to be really bad work? Like, what's that about? But if it's through relationships and, you know, for friends or whatever, for people that you know, it's okay to charge really low rates for them because they already know you. You know, it's just people that don't know you. You want to be careful about charging really low rates to people who don't know you because you may not actually get opportunities. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, so, yeah, so all this stuff kind of feeds into each other. Uh, and you end up with a body of work that's uh, pretty strong and you could just keep building. Um, the other thing you could do is start a YouTube channel. Because that's a good idea. 